Uh, Maria, first, uh, thank you so much for taking the time. <laughs> I know you're a busy woman even during COVID. Um, the whole reason why I was calling is because I'd like to hear what you had to say about the newest album that you just released with uh, Tuba Skinny. Well, I'll have to tell you the history of how I hooked up with this wonderful band. I was, uh, I was in a clothing store in Woodstock, New York, where I used to live years ago, a couple of years ago, and I heard this wonderful vintage jazz floating out over the speakers into the store, and I remarked to the lady, oh, how nice that the, radio, the local radio station is playing this old-fashioned old blues and jazz tunes, and she said, oh, that's not the radio, that's a band, that's my CD. And I, I, I asked who it was, and she said it was a band called To The Skinny. I, I said, I never heard of them. And um, uh, because, you know, I've studied and, and played blues and jazz from the 20s and 30s for, you know, over 50 years, and I know quite a bit about the music. I said, I never heard of that band. And she said, well, they're not from back then. They're, they're a young band of street musicians who play in New Orleans. So I could, would not believe her that they were young musicians because it, it sounded so authentic and so soulful that I was just sure it had to be old recordings. But finally she showed me the CD and I, I had to believe her. So I was very happy to know there was a group of young musicians who were so, so um, into this old music and I asked her to get me some CDs of theirs and she did and I just started listening to them and I just love the way they play because the it's not just like they're playing old vintage jazz, it's almost like they're channeling the whole vibration from that era because they play in a nice relaxed groove and um, it's much more organic sounding than any music today. So anyway, I, uh, when I went to New Orleans two years ago, I was making an al another album called uh, Don't You Feel My Leg, The Naughty Body Blues of Blue Lou Barber. I was paying tribute to a, a blues woman from down here in New Orleans. And uh, I, I, every chance I got, I would go hear them play, and I just fell in love with them. Early in 2020, I was invited to New Orleans to do a show, a special showcase set for the International Folk Alliance that was meeting here. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought, Wow, why don't I, why don't I call to the skinny and see if they'll do a set with me? Because I live in California, and I go, well, I don't want to bring my whole band from California just to do this little show. So sure enough, they said yes, and we had one rehearsal, and it sounded great because it, it's like we both are, have been drinking from the same musical fountains. I really know and love this music, and they do too. So. It was a natural fit, and we did the show, and everybody came up to us afterwards and told us how much they loved it, and uh, Olga Peterson, my old friend who used to own Stony Plain Records, happened to be there. He was getting a Lifetime Achievement Award, and he just loved the, the sound of us together. He said, this is like a musical marriage made in heaven, and he said, how would you, what would you think about doing an album with them. And I said, oh my God, I'd love to. So that's how it came about. He spoke to the current head of Stony Plains and told him how much he enjoyed this music. And so that's what gave us the opportunity to make the album. And uh, we uh, the, and the first song we found, Oliver and I started looking for tunes on the internet. And we came across a tune by Lou Harden Armstrong, who was Louie Armstrong's first wife, and uh, she was a great piano player and songwriter and, and singer in her own right. And it was a song called Let's Get Happy Together. And we listened to it and we thought, oh my God, that would be perfect to do with this band. <laughs> and I said, it would even make a good title for the album. So that was the first song we found right there in our initial conversation about the project. And little did we dream that like, a month later, the whole world would be shut down and we would have to endure over a year of gloom and doom and pain and loss and all the stress we've all been under. So, mm -hmm. um, but, but I, I went on to 
research other tunes for the for the album and uh, last October I came down to New Orleans and spent about a week and we recorded the album and it, 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 it was just a natural fit. And of course we were very, very careful about, you know, social distancing and wearing masks and all that, but we, um, we were able to maintain that in the studio. And, um, and now, months later, just as we're all coming out of hibernation and lockdown and people are getting vaccinated and starting to, you know, be able to come together and enjoy live music again and, and other activities, uh, I think it's perfect timing that this album is coming out called Let's Get Happy Together because it's about time. Now, I know that you, as a musician, uh, you've written your own songs, you also sing. Uh, no, I do not write my own songs. Oh, you just sing the ones that exist. I, I made, because I do not write my own songs, I have made it my business all my life to know who the really great songwriters are in, in the various genres that I might be working in. And I, uh, and I always uh, go through great effort to, to find appropriately written songs for each project. Okay. Uh, now that's the, the, that makes sense because I've been listening to everything that's available on Spotify that you participated in, be it your own soul albums or projects that you participated with other musicians, Eric Bibb, uh, Dr. John, and a whole skew of others, including this newest one. I'm surprised that you never decided to play a musical instrument uh, other than just using your voice. Well, I play a pretty mean tambourine. I mean, I really play it. A lot of, a lot of, you know, female singers, they, they pick up a tambourine so that they look like they're doing something while they're up there singing, mm -hmm. you know, but I really can play it and all my musicians, you know, that I record and perform with, you know, tell me that, you know, you're really playing that thing. I always tell them it's because it's the Sicilian national instrument, oh. and I'm Sicilian. <laughs> so, so, but, uh, but I do, and I play a little fiddle, but, you know, not enough to, to you know, I have recorded some fiddle, um, but mostly I sing, and that's enough for me. Okay, now... I know so many other... With a, with, I can work with piano players like Dr. John and, and guitar players like Rye Cooter and horn players like the people in Tuba Skinny and so forth and so on. Um, their, musician, their, their musical talent and proficiency is way over what mine could ever be, so I just use the best of the best for whatever I'm trying to do. Were you born in Italy or in the U.S.? No, no, I was born in uh, Greenwich Village, New York, okay. many, many years ago, but my both sides of my family are, are directly from Italy. Okay. Um, One side Sicilian and the other side Neapolitan. Okay, and uh, I know your singing wasn't really influenced in that degree, but I see that a lot of your album material... You, you really love to sing the blues, and you also love to sing a lot of jazz tunes. Um, yes. The, the, uh, the works that you've done, especially in the past three years, have demonstrated how far you've come uh, in such a way that it's almost impossible not to want to dance and to actually sit and listen and close your eyes and be transported somewhere else. <laughs> Oh, good. That's what that's what music is for, and I'm glad you said that because that's what I feel like when I listen to Tuba Skinny. They, the way they play this music, there's a lot of traditional jazz bands that have have very fine musicianship and and you know skillful players, but the way Tuba Skinny plays this music, it does transport me to a to a simpler time of about a hundred years ago, before everything was so mechanized and digitalized, okay. a time when things were much more relaxed and had a much more organic rhythm to them. And somehow they're channeling that rhythm. And that's what makes people happy. It literally makes people visibly and palpably happy the minute you hear them play. <laughs> Uh, now, in regards to COVID, how have you been handling this yourself? The COVID being, being in lockdown? Yeah. 
in California, Will, California is a pretty progressive place, and we uh, we had a very good governor, a, a Democrat, I might want to add, who um, disregarded what our former uh, White House resident was trying to put out there, and he really followed all the advice of the medical experts, and he, he got us locked down at the minute it became apparent that it was spreading throughout California. And because of that, we've had a much lighter time of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I live in Marin County, which is just north over the Golden Gate Bridge from San Francisco. And we had cases, make no mistake, but everybody followed the protocol, so it never got really bad. And um, I, I was able to continue swimming every day outside. We couldn't use an indoor pool, but we could use the outdoor pool. So even, even though in the freezing cold winter, I swam outside almost every day. And that, that uh, kept me together both physically, mentally, and spiritually. Oh, and, then, and then, yeah, so it really, really helped. And I, uh, it, it actually it gave me the time having the COVID so I had no live gigs. It gave me more time to do song research and pull this project together. <laughs> and now that we're all vaccinated, or most of us, it, it, I'm down in New Orleans and people are starting to play in the street again. And I enjoyed a couple of uh, To The Skinny shows that they did in the street. And people were just dancing. People were really happy to get out and be together again um, in a healthy way and safe way. So okay. I think it's a perfect timing. My album's coming out May 7th, and I'm asking everybody to let's get happy together. Exactly. Now, uh, you mentioned that you love swimming. Apart from that, any other favorite hobbies? I don't really have time for any other hobbies. I like to cook, and I like to, um, you know, watch good programs on TV. I, I, I'm a hawk for the news. Um, I love to watch good news shows and, uh, you know, see friends and, you know, play music and that, that about covers it. Okay. And uh, one last weird question that I've asked everyone else that I've interviewed. Um, what's your favorite dish? My favorite dish? Yeah. Oh, my God. You're Now you're throwing me for a loop. Let me think a minute. My favorite dish. Well, one of them would be an Italian dish called osso buco, which are the, which are, uh, it's a, it's a braised veal shanks, oh, braised okay. in tomato sauce, and you serve it over risotto or polenta, and, um, and it's just braised for a long time with, with wine and tomatoes and carrots and onions and it, it's just divine oh, wow. that's the one that came to mind at the moment and the other one since i'm down in new orleans i would have to say one of my all-time favorite dishes is uh sauteed soft-shelled crabs done the way they do it down here in new orleans oh well i can imagine i'm not a seafood buff unfortunately but i i love the smell of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's one one of my faves, so now you got two there from me. Okay, well, Maria, I won't hold you longer. Thank you so much for taking the time to finally getting an interview with you over the past month and okay. a half. Well, thank you so much for taking an interest in my music and in this album, and uh, thank you for sharing it with your listeners. Well, thank you so much for giving us your time. Have a nice day, please. Okay, you too, dear.